Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States military is well known for prioritizing preparedness above virtually anything else. And to ensure that their troops are ready to handle anything they encounter, leaders of the Navy, Army, and Marines have developed some rather extreme training methods and missions. One example is ICE-X, a multi-week initiative that takes place in the Arctic Ocean. Featuring naval teams from the US, Canada, and other allies, the goal of ICE-X is to evaluate the readiness of submarine forces while pursuing scientific investigations of the northernmost parts of the Earth. Start there. The poles are among the least explored regions of the world, but it is becoming more and more important as countries understand their potential strategic value. ICE-X focuses a lot on submarine capabilities. Indeed, subs like the USS New Mexico are among the most advanced vessels in the US Navy's arsenal. They are also essential to the country's first strike and initial defense capabilities. Therefore, it's important to understand how these ships will behave in the Arctic's icy conditions. This includes teaching crews how to safely and properly break through sheets of ice. A normal sub can punch through about three feet of solid ice. For thicker spots, they must use side-scan sonar and other tools to find the best location to break through. A single wrong move can damage the billion-dollar sub or put the crew's lives at risk. So, the surfacing must be done very slowly. ICE-X participants perform a variety of other exercises as well, including Arctic torpedo recovery. Working in such cold environment poses unique challenges that dramatically affect both divers and their equipment. In fact, failure to properly insulate oneself can cause hypothermia in a matter of minutes. After torpedo firing tests, a crew of divers will be dispatched to recover the dummy torpedo from the ice.
In order to perform the exercise safely, divers must communicate with the crews above, secure the torpedo, and find a proper place in the ice to bring it out of the water. Once secured, the torpedo will be slowly pulled out by a helicopter. Because the environment is so dramatically different from what one might find closer to the equator, Ice-X provides a chance for all sorts of military personnel to familiarize themselves with how their bodies and their equipment will respond to the cold. Aircraft, for instance, will often be fitted with special ski landing gear in order to facilitate easier landings on ice and snow-covered surfaces. Even prepping a plane for takeoff in such conditions is very different from doing so in a temperate climate. Fortunately, some planes do not need to land in order to aid a team down on the ice. Using airdrops, aircraft can provide supplies, food, and even shelter to people who might be waiting for rescue or assistance. Many people are surprised to discover that the military organization most involved in Arctic operations is the U.S. Coast Guard. Though their primary mission is border security and maritime search and rescue, the Coast Guard has long since adopted additional duties related to scientific investigation. As the Arctic remains a mystery to many in the scientific community, the Coast Guard considers this facet of its mission just as important as anything else. Though many of the Coast Guard's advanced cutters are capable of operating in cold water, they are not necessarily prepared to deal with the thick ice that surrounds the Arctic Circle. As a result, the organization has come to rely on special vessels known as icebreakers. These ships feature reinforced and sometimes double hulls with a unique shape that helps them move through sea ice without sustaining damage. They also feature powerful engines that help them apply consistent pressure to ice drifts, breaking them under the sheer weight of the ship. In the late 1990s, the U.S. Coast Guard received its largest and most advanced icebreaker of all, the USCHC Healy. At 420 feet long and 82 feet wide, it features a specially designed hull that minimizes impacts from ice while maximizing the ship's braking abilities.
In fact, it can easily ram through the ice as thick as 4.5 feet using its bow. In 2015, the Healy became the first unaccompanied U.S. vessel to reach the North Pole, where it uses its numerous onboard facilities to study the environment, water, and sea life. Hold on, hold on, Frank, back out. So I get pyro in there. The Healy is designed to support a crew of up to 136 people. All right, cool. So, break off. And while most Coast Guard ships are staffed by medical and rescue personnel, The bulk of Healy's crew consists of scientists and researchers. The inside of the ship is expansive, with five laboratories in all. It also boasts a sophisticated data center where technicians can compile and analyze all the data the ship collects. The Healy is well prepared for whatever it might encounter, using a combination of diesel and electric power to minimize fuel usage. Two Eurocopter HH-65 Dolphin helicopters and several fast boats for reconnaissance and rescue operations. One such operation took place in July 2014, when a Canadian man piloting a 36-foot sailboat from Vancouver to eastern Canada became unexpectedly trapped in the ice. Fortunately, the Healy was called up to sail to the man, breaking the ice as it went. Once they located the man's vessel, they used their heavy crane to haul the ship back to shore, while medical teams treated him for exposure. Over the years, the United States Air Force has also expanded its ability to operate in the frozen north. One of the ways that Air Force personnel can become more familiar with these cold weather operations is by participating in a special biennial event known as Arctic Thunder. This air show takes place in Anchorage, Alaska, and draws tens of thousands of people every year. Paratroopers, for instance, can get experience jumping out of a low-flying C-17 and recovering equipment and vehicles dropped alongside them. These specially painted F-16s perform a wide range of tricks and choreographed movements that demonstrate just how well trained the Air Force's pilots really are.
This allows civilians to explore and interact with real Air Force personnel and equipment. Is that cool? That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.